Hey, everybody. Welcome to another college football extravaganza episode of Phil and the Mike. I, as always, am Darren Michael. Joined with me, the man who, man, he is just exhausted. He was up all night last night, sitting center court at Serena Williams' last match, just crying his eyes out. Raina was there to console him. Phil, man, are you okay? Your eyes look puffy from all those tears. Sad night, sad night, but she fought valiantly. She was resilient. I don't know if anybody saw it. About 10 match points she held off, and then she finally relinquished. But excellent job, Serena Williams. It was just an, un- an unbelievable Amazing career. career. un believable career. But, you know, the... Um, the, the funny thing about last night, it's, it's a quick story. We went out to, we went out to dinner like we do most Friday nights and uh, the place we're at, they have a bunch of TVs up and Serena Williams is wearing like this sparkly, mm-hmm. like a sparkly dress. Yeah. It was like the stupidest thing I've ever seen. So I said to, I said to my girls, I'm like, or actually all three of them. I said, Oh, you know, <clears throat> I said, she's got to wear that because she doesn't have time to change because after this, she's going to a big black tie event. And, uh, you know, and they're all laughing at that. And Aubrey thought I was serious. I'm like, Aubrey, Aubrey. come on. You're, you're, I'm like, you're 14 years old. Come on. So she actually thought that she wouldn't have time since so she was all formal. But that's what She's it truly going... looked like. It looked like she was going off in style. A little bit, a little bit more of style. like formal wear. You know? A little formal wear action. It, was, I liked uh... it. it wasn't a surprise to me. She's worn <laughs> at the, all three matches. So that's. I think I might have had that reaction the first one, but now it was her third match wearing the same thing. So. Maybe that's what she's going into. She wants to go into selling her own tennis clothes and it's going to be like the sparkly tennis clothes trying to get all the young girls involved she pulled like it off though she's, she's 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 a giant of the sport you see all the celebrities that were there everybody was there to say goodbye russell Wilson oh, of course. was there i saw that tiger was yeah. there the other day i don't know there was a lot of them those are the two i, I, I mean i heard tickets were going for just tens of thousands of dollars for the, the last match might have been yeah I mean, who the hell cares? Who the hell cares? Great, that, greatness has exited. Greatness has exited stage left. She was she was phenomenal. She was phenomenal. I've never heard this before, though, but the woman, but, I did catch this this speech at the end. The woman who beat her sounded sad she beat her and almost like she wanted to lose. I was like, this is non-competitive talk right here. I know, right? She's like, right. I wish I could have, I don't know. She was just like so <laughs> monitored. She's like, I know nobody's happy with this result. <laughs> like, well, not only yeah. that, dude, it's the third round. Why are they interviewing her? For, it's like, it's the third freaking round, you know? Not only that, nobody even, doesn't even realize that she got smoked playing with her sister doubles. I mean, the combined I mean, age uh, of the two of them is 300. I mean, I mean, it, it's funny when you think about, um, when you think about Serena, because she's, she's what, 40 years old. Dude, she's been playing professionally for 26 years. Yeah, I think she's 41 or 42. Yeah, that's whatever it is, man. That is yeah. an absurdly long time to play. And and yeah, she's I mean, she'll go down as probably the greatest ever. But enough of that. Are you are you excited that today AMC theaters are uh, are providing all their movies for three dollars? No, no, it's college football Saturday, baby. <laughs> Nobody cares about their three dollar movie. Get well, listen, before we go into college football Saturday, which I know is exciting, we're, we're, we're coming to you from uh, from actually the morning of the first uh, the first true uh, Saturday. Which is why season. Darren, folks, looks like he does. You see I the do. kid who goes to bed earlier and the person who waits goes to bed at 3 a.m. I didn't go to bed at 3. I went to, I, what time did I go to bed last night? One fifteen. One fifteen. So I was in bed a little bit early. Um, right. I don't I don't even know why. I don't even know why I was up so late. But anyway, anyway, so You're a night I, owl. You're a night I owl. want to start off with a little trivia question for you because I love this so much. And this one is yeah, going to be fun. You love making me look like a fool. All right, let's Th- go. This is going to be fun. And uh, I'm ready. I'm going to let you tell me how many guesses you think it's going to take. OK, the question today is I've got 15 uh, Hall of Fame or Hall of Fame caliber players in multiple sports that okay. ended their careers with different teams. So 15 Hall of Famers who just didn't end their career with the team they started their career? Is that what you're telling me? Right. For example, let's say let's say you like, had uh, Albert Pujols, yeah. St. Louis, and he ended his career with... Okay, all right, all right. I'm with you. I don't, I don't even know where... Uh, he's back in St. Louis. A little okay, ambiguous, so, but I'm, I'm with you. All right. Okay, all right. So so you've got you've got 15... All right. What what do you think the over under is here for how many you, you're going to be able to get correct? Mm, six. How many? I hear you. Did you say something? Six. 
You're going to be able to get six out of 15. You are that big of a moron. Really? I, I mean, that's not yeah, a you challenge. Me for, I could, I could ask, I, I could well, ask Brooke that and she well, would get I mean, more I, right. It, all right. Eight. <laughs> it's still terrible. All right. Well, let's just, let's just jump more into than it. half. Let's just jump into it. Let's see how good you are. Some of them are going to be, are going to be tough. Some of them are going to be easy, but you I know, know that. And some are going to be like some random, we willy keeler. You're going to give me. Like, no, no, I know no, 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 no. Only, only all time greats and only, right. f- and every one of these guys was alive except for one while, while you've been alive. All right. They're all right, not all alive go. now, but most of them are. All right. We're going to start off every sport or just one sport. Uh, it's baseball, it's football, and it's basketball. I was gonna throw some hockey in there, but I figured that's probably yeah, I appreciate not it. good. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Rod Gilbert. So number one, Joe right. Namath. Yeah, but it's hard. I got to remember where he finished. Right. That's, that's what you're asking me. That's the whole idea behind this. That's why it's so much fun. I didn't. I, I got to be honest with you. I did not know all these. Some of these are. I think some of these are really tough, but some of them are really easy. Joe Namath should have finished a jet. Should have, but he really finished. Finish? He really finished at the bar. Um, <laughs> I want to kiss you. <laughs> Never forget that moment. Raiders. Just, the Raiders is not correct. That's a big X. He finished his career with the Rams. All right. Next. Johnny Unitas. <laughs> Dude, may, maybe six was better for you. This this could be really tough. Shit, now that I'm looking at this, I wonder if you're going to get any right. Saints. He finished his career with the Chargers. Okay. Jerry Rice. Raiders. Seahawks. He oh, finished with three. the Seahawks. So you don't even need to even know. That's how that's how wild these are, right? It, it, yeah, I but the, he did go to the Raiders, so he just he, played forever. He had some productive seasons with the Raiders, but not with the Seahawks. How about this one? Now, this one you will that's never why this get. This was a setup. I just wanted this, to go with six. No, I thought this was really interesting. I read this article the other day. This one is just really, really tough. Okay, Franco yeah, Harris. I'm zero for three. Don't tell me about tough. Franco Harris. Who the hell in their right mind thought that Franco Harris played for any other team but the Steelers? He Eagles. played ha- he played half a season for the Seahawks his last year. Oh, the Seahawks take everybody in the I see, it year. seems nice. like there's another team that takes everybody too, but how about Babe Ruth? Did he end with um I will even t- you could either take the city or the name Did of the he team. he ended with the Braves. The Boston Braves. Ding 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 ding. You got one right. All right, you're one for five. So you're 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 doing terrible. All right. Now let's switch gears to a little. Uh, let's throw in a couple basketball players. Sure. Let's, what give the hell? You a, let's give you an easy one, Patrick Ewing. Aren't you like a Knicks fan or something? Yeah, dude. But when he's left the Knicks, I think he ended <laughs> up with a few different teams afterwards too. So yeah, he he just he um, just hung around. These guys just hung around for whatever for reason. Long. I got two names in my in my mind but i i don't think either seattle supersonics uh close close orlando magic put an x next to that one how about hakeem olajuwon the dream didn't end with the rockets <laughs> you don't even, <laughs> see this is interesting right i think this is crazy it's interesting. no uh, do you want to take a guess or not yeah i mean uh hakeem, i actually remember i remember him playing on hakeem other. hakeem uh where did he end up he ended up with the uh 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 it's for it's like for it's like the line from uh coming to america san when, antonio uh, spurs when akeem goes to the windshield and go, goes to the uh the deck and goes i am very happy to be here you think he was, shut you th- the hell up <laughs> do, you, do you think he was saying that when he was playing for the toronto raptors <laughs> no <laughs> no i don't he think even so. stay in this country <laughs> what he's saying is it's friggin' cold here. That's what he was saying. All right. The uh, he, the ultimate in criminal, O.J. Simpson. Bills. He finished with the 49ers. All right. All right. How about Hank Aaron? That's easy. Milwaukee. Milwaukee Brewers is correct. And what about this one's easy, too? How about Emmett Smith? Uh, Cardinals. 
Cardinals is correct. Look at you, dude. You're on a roll. You're on a roll. Let's make it three in a row. Vladimir Guerrero Sr. <laughs> so he obviously played with the Expos. Then he went and played with the Angels. I'm sure he didn't end up there because that would be too easy. <sighs> Vlad Guerrero, what did he do? He had batted 146 and got 33 at bats with who? Like, I mean, all the no, setup, no, everything's no, a he, setup. He played a full season with the Baltimore Orioles. Oh wow. Okay. And what about what about Jim Tomey? Jim Thome. Jim Jim Thome. Where did Jim <laughs> Thome go? <laughs> Jim Thome. That's like to us who knew him best. That's like from uh there's something about Mary. Brett Favre. Favre. Uh, Jim Thome ended up with the um, – he definitely stayed in the American League. So let's go uh, yeah. Let's go White Sox. Yeah, let's not and say the O's also. Another team that likes to collect retards at the they, end of they their really, They career. really – they pick up a lot Great. of guys at the very end of their career. It's, it's, it's really pathetic. All right, we've got three more to go. So far, you've gotten three right. I got, a, I got three. No, I got four right now. Three? No, you got three. You got three. You don't don't give yourself. All right, three. I got to sweep it to tie my uh, prediction. All right, these are going to be some easy ones. All right, I'm going to give you this one, Pedro Martinez. So I think he ended up finishing his career with the Phillies. He did end up. See, I told you that was easy. Pedro Martinez in the he Phillies. he had better years with the Mets, but then he ended up with the Phillies. Go ahead. He did end up with the Phillies. These couple, I think, are are. Pretty difficult. This guy played for about three hundred teams. You lied to me. Uh, this yeah. one, this guy played for about three hundred teams in the last five seasons of his career at age seventy. Ricky Henderson. Gosh, I didn't I think he was he ever going to retire. With the Mets. I know he, he did played play for with the Mets. everybody. At the I know, but career. he played with the Mets towards the end of his career. But where he ended his career. It's just odd to me. These, these are some of these are just. It's like really. How many teams did Ricky play for? I don't Actually, know. Answer this. I want to you say it there. Do you see it or you don't see it? I can look it up. I want to say it was. I like, forget it. We don't want to waste time on it. I, I'm going to go Braves. Uh, no, you're incorrect. It's the Dodgers. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Never pictured him in that. And then last but not least, this is for you, buddy. This is for you, Mike Piazza. Oh yeah, he ended with the. Um, so, believe it or not, he ended with two West Coast teams, and I just don't know which order he ended with. He played for the Padres and A's, and I got to think about who he ended with. Well, you got a 50-50 shot, my man. I think he – I think for whatever reason, he ended with Oakland. I think you're correct. I think you are correct, my friend. Nice job. So you got five out of 15, five. but but let's be honest, man, that was really tough because you don't picture these yeah. guys in any other yeah. uniform other than what they played in. So that's why it was that's why it was exciting. So yeah. congratulations yeah. on getting five out of 15. Pathetic. But 33%. congratulations. Yeah, that's really hey. if, if listen, if you're a baseball player, dude, awesome job. Thirty three percent going to the Hall of Fame with three thirty three average. If you're a football player. You suck. If I'm a weatherman, Hall of Fame. <laughs> weather man you could be zero percent it doesn't matter as long as you look good on camera so let's get into some college football <clears throat> wanted to start off with the good and the bad about college football overall okay. and i wanted to hear your your thoughts on uh, and we've talked about we've talked about this for a long time college football expands to a 12 team playoff to start anytime between 2024 and 2026 a 12 team 11 game postseason how excited are you for that? Okay, so I'm going to – so it's something I've talked about in terms of it had to at least get to eight teams. Yep. And I thought 12 is cool because of um, – because that they, they could play on campuses. Yeah, and yeah. And eight yeah. was probably not going to allow for that. 12 does. So in concept, do I love it? I do love it. Yeah. Um. I like opening up the 10th a little bit, pull more teams under the 10th. I like that. What I'm cautious about loving it more is the chaos that ensued this off season, just in terms of, you know, now it looks like USC and UCLA are headed to big 10. We know Texas and Oklahoma headed to the SEC. So what I'm cautious about is it, like, there's some weak conferences now. Oh, it's, like, it's crazy. I like the 12 team format under the, you know, thought that everybody stays where they belong geographically 
And to me, like everything college football does, they're always backwards. Yeah. And they always make a change when it's too late. So now you have teams all merging into basically two mega conferences. Yep. And now you're going to have a big wide 12 team playoff where you let the six conference champions make it. And it's like, there's not six good conferences. There's barely three good conferences. So like, are we going to do a redo and Texas and Oklahoma are going to go, my bad. See you SEC. We're going to go back because we don't need this anymore. And is UCLA and USC going to figure out a way to get out of it? And they're going to go, my bad. We want to stay out in California. And you don't think Lincoln Riley's going, wait a second. Now I got to fight through the big 10 across the country. I could just dominate the West and make the playoff every year. So like, so I, yeah, uh, tough. like a year ago, two years ago, would I have been ecstatic with the news you just said? Yeah. Yep. yep, yep. Now I'm like, wait a second, how is this all going to work? And I, I'm going to, it I'm definitely biased. throws Everybody a wrench into this. things. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Notre Dame fan. I'm biased, but I have a problem with the idea now that there's not even four good conferences because there's not right. Now I'm bi- now I'm annoyed with the idea that Notre Dame is not allowed to be a top four team and get a buy because they're not a conference champion because there's not four good conferences. Now that so, that 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 brings up a good point now. But I'm just you know, saying, I'm just saying like you're trying to tell me that the fourth conference champion, which could be a terrible Big Twelve conference that doesn't have Oklahoma or Texas, or a terrible Pac-12 conference that doesn't have UCLA or USC more specifically is going to be the four seed over like a 12 and 0 Notre Dame team that played a 10 times tougher schedule just because they're not in a conference. Like, so it's like, they always do things half. They get penalized. So when they You're all right. got together, yeah. like when they all got together and said, all right, guys, listen, the world changed. We wanted to do this 12 team thing like three years ago, but you know, half of you guys voted no and everybody's afraid and everybody hides behind academics when it's not true. Cause nobody even goes to class in 90% of these schools. And so they make all this stuff fake. But once they got in there this week and said, all right, guys, we're going to do the 12 team playoff again, somebody should have put their hand up and go, there's not even close to six good conferences. There's certainly not four great ones anymore. Mm -mm. So why don't we just say the 12 best teams make it? Well, don't they always talk about the power five conferences? I do, but somehow I think. Like, where the hell is the sixth? Where's the the sixth? Well, there's the power power five. five, And then I think, and maybe I'm incorrect about this, I think the highest ranked team from the other power comp from the non-power five make it the whole thing they're insured so the non-power five best ranked team you know how right now the non-power five best ranked team makes it into a, a big yeah, bowl yeah. a new year's yeah. Six bowl i yeah. think they're taking that same formula now they're saying we're not going to guarantee you what seed but like if you're houston and you go 12 and 0 and you're ranked you know 11th or 13th yeah. it doesn't matter if you're whatever yeah. you're ranked yeah. you're going to get doesn't into matter. the top 12 Right. You could be 19th. You're going to make it. Listen, it makes sense. It makes sense. And I, I agree with what you said. I think it's great that they're finally doing that, but it's, it is too late to do that. And it really screws it's everything up. It's too late because the world changed and now it doesn't work. The world changed entirely. But you know what? You know why they're really doing it? Supposedly, I read that this is going to generate $2 billion. 11 games are going to generate $2 billion dollars billion dollars so yeah. these teams wow. are just gonna i mean it's like now, the rich get get richer what, okay so now i'm gonna i don't want to be all gloom and doom let me give you my two seconds of positive do i like the fact that you're gonna get a 512 matchup in south bend indiana on a cold mid-december day yeah do i think that's yeah. super cool do i think the optics of like i'm just picking a name the florida gators i'm yeah. not picking that yeah. by chance obviously shout out to the Michael family who likes the Gators, we do, but the Gators who don't venture out of the swamp very much, haven't been into a cold weather game since Darren Michael was in diapers <laughs> travels. They don't even know how to go West and North when they get yeah, in the airport, yeah. but all of a sudden now they got to go to South Bend and they look at their AccuWeather forecast and it's 11 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> in South Bend and little Timmy Tebow jr can't even get his arm back to throw (laughs) and Notre Dame beats them 40 to three. And we all say, ah, finally a team from the South played in the cold for a big game, but no, but seriously, I'm having fun with it, but it could be the flip Notre Dame travel. Notre Dame is, does travel all over the country, but the flip side, it would be cool to see, you know, Wisconsin travel down to. Well, now now you're going to get the chance for these other, for these other teams to, to show, that they're that they're really great. But at a the end of the of day, that, you get to listen, showcase these big campuses on a playoff night. 
That's at, cool. listen, That's dude. Really at the cool. at the end of the day, it's great for fans, plain and simple. That's what it comes down to. All the other well, BS behind it. But do I think matter. it's going to change one iota of the three or four best teams? No, no, no it's not, not at all. Alabama is not. You know, the top not, teams are the they, top teams. If they don't year. get beat to the four seed, they're not getting beat to the eight seed. Like on their on and it won't be in their home campus because they're going to move to the, the bowl system by the yeah once yeah, they yeah, get yeah. through the first round or whatever you want to call it the campus sites then they're going to just segue right into the, the now the, the one thing that i hope happens is i hope that this i hope that they take over a bunch of bowls and they start getting rid of them because now over 50 percent of the teams make a bowl. i don't think ridiculous. they're doing anything i think they're taking the big six bowls the new year six they're just making them be the quarterfinals then they're taking the rotation of the two current playoff bowls. Like, you yeah, know, how they rotate yeah. amongst the six. They're going to then yeah. host the semifinals. And then the championship is always going to be at a separate place, like the Super Bowl. Every year it's going to be different. So I, I okay. don't think they're doing that. I think it's basically, if you don't know, it's basically take the New Year's Six Bowl alignment, rotate the two semifinals like they still do. The championship game will always be at a, a, a random venue every year. The only difference is the four. there's going to be four games, right? Yeah. 5, 12, 6, 11, 7, 10, yep. 8, 9. There's going to be yep. four new games created on campus sites. The middle of December is what I think I read. And they actually said there's flexibility. So if like Notre Dame wants to work out a deal yeah. to play it December 10th, I'm only using Notre Dame because I feel like they're always going to make the playoff now and they're always going to host a game because they can't be a buy team. Yeah, so I feel like, like Notre it. Dame money-wise makes out the best because they're going to get a bunch of home playoff games guaranteed. Probably, probably. Yeah. So we'll, you know? we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on. It's exciting. It's exciting. We'll see what happens. We still got a couple of years to, to, to iron out the, uh, the details. Some things that I think are really hurting the game um one is the uh the nil money and mm -hmm. two is the two is the transfer portal and three even is the is the preseason rankings and i just wanted to give you a little background um bryce young as a what is he this year a junior he's gonna make three million dollars this year as a college athlete a low ball too he probably is gonna make that, yeah well it's ridiculous and uh i love the i love the transfer portal when you've got the bolitnikoff winner jordan addison pulling up to USC for the first uh, his first practice in a hundred and twenty thousand dollar Mercedes. Like I, ha I have a problem with this. And then the preseason rankings, I mean, really, what do you what are you ranking these guys on? And you and I talk about this. Oh, all you're the always time. on this rant. I know, I know. Oh my well, the, god. Well here's the thing. Here's the thing. I this used to be my big rant. You know how like you know how sometimes you think the world, the United States or something, you're like, oh I I I I, I wish for a fonder day years past or i like when we used to do x or y and now we've moved to, to a different place i yeah. yearn for the days of just complaining about preseason rankings instead now we're now the conversations around why is usc playing in big 10 country and yeah, why is yeah. a kid getting six million dollars to transfer to alabama so i yeah, yearn yeah, for the yeah, days yeah, of yeah. just being annoyed they do preseason rankings so i can't even whole, harp on it anymore because it's like <clears throat> so irrelevant to the bigger problem the, the whole thing is just it, it's just ridiculous it's just now it's just free agency i mean that's all it is you don't have to sit free, out of your pure way. free agency it's it, pure free it's agency. just it's, it's free agency in high school, and then every year you get a do-over. So, because really, let's look at it this way: if you're a smart yeah. kid, now if you're if you're you should be focused on your sport. But if you're just a savvy business-minded kid or come from a business family and have a ton of talent, you could go grab three million dollars to play at Texas. After year one, you could go put yourself in the portal and get six million to go play at Alabama. And if your whole career never amounts to anything, you got nine million dollars before you ever even, you know, really performed because they're paying well, you, people sight unseen. They're paying high schoolers you, who never did you, it. You got, you got to remember something. You got to remember something. The, uh, the, the number one quarterback coming out of high school a couple years ago, I can't remember what his name is, but he was from Texas. I think he graduated a year early. So he wasn't 18. So he couldn't take any NIL money. So he actually went to Ohio state, got a million dollars in NIL money, turned 18, transferred back to texas as their starting quarterback what you're what you've missed in that story was ohio the state allowed nil money and texas didn't so because he was underage well, that's, he went that's to ohio state. i don't you didn't clarify so i just want to clarify okay. yeah but so that, he didn't okay, go to didn't, texas yeah. so he could grab the nli money and seemingly didn't even want to play there because the next year he then grabbed texas money and went to play there so ohio state paid him a million dollars to do nothing for them except practice for a year that's exactly right just because he was a big time recruit insane, insane. That's right it's it's just crap it's just crap so but we digress 
Yeah. So this year, uh, what I really wanted to do is just, I mean, when we look at the top, we look at the top 25, right? You've got, I mean, of course, you've got the SEC with six teams in the top 25. Why? Because they've got name. Uh, Big Big 10, four, ACC, four, Pac-12, three, um, Big 12, three, and then you got independence and Amer- American conference and stuff like that. But what I really wanted, I just wanted to focus on the top three. Because it seems okay. like year in and year out, they're always the top three, you know, and you've got – and when I say top three this year, it's pretty much in every poll that you look at, it's Bama one, Ohio State two, and Georgia three. You know, then you've mm-hmm. got – and then even the top five customarily, it's Clemson and Notre Dame. I mean, year after year, that's usually the top five, which is just unbelievable how that just happens. I mean, it's – it's like everybody else is fighting for the sixth spot since those. I would top throw five Oklahoma into if I would if I was saying the six teams in the last four or five years that seemingly are living yeah, in the Oklahoma's top six, up there. Yeah. Oklahoma yeah. would be in there too. <clears throat> but I wanted to talk about I want to talk about specifically I want I want to talk about a little bit about Alabama first because they actually have a uh, their chances of winning are the third best since i guess this started since 2001 the best chance of winning the whole thing was usc and 05 who were plus 160 bama in 2018 plus 175 they're plus 180 to win which is which is if you know anything about betting that that's pretty ridiculous yeah uh, to win it all the before the season starts that's insane yeah yeah i mean that's it, it's crazy so you know yeah. so when you look at 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 Bama, you know, okay, how is it that they're so good? Well, for one, they've got the number two recruiting class. Once again, they're always in the top five recruiting classes. They return five offensive starters, seven off uh, defensive starters. They return the Heisman Trophy winner who only passed for 4,872 yards and 47 touchdowns last year. And, um, you know, they've got new receivers. They've got new running backs. So they're new all over the place. They return seven on defense. They've got all world player Will Anderson Jr. And just to show you how good this freaking guy is, and I, I don't even, I guess he couldn't go pro because he was too young. I don't even know. But he had 17 and a half sacks last year, 34 and a half tackles for loss. I mean, are you friggin' kidding me? This guy lived in the backfield. And, uh, and of course, I like them because they've got the, uh, the best named cornerback in college football, Cool Aid McKinstry. Love my man, Kool Aid. I could just picture him out there in the big red container with the smiley face, playing with all the kids, and how he's able to move when he's so big. I don't know, but but you know, you look at this team, and the one thing that I notice is that they don't have a, they, their schedule is terrible. They've got what I would say is two uh, relatively challenging games uh, at number nineteen Arkansas and at number twenty one Ole Miss. I got to do a let me do a side rant for just a second. Do it. So do it. Please, please, please. We cannot take what looks to be on paper one of the weakest schedules Alabama's played in a long time and yeah. somehow turn it into a tough one by November. Please, no. let's just call it, call no. it like we see it, like it is. It's a weak schedule. We know, and I don't, and this is my annoyance with what Notre Dame did to themselves, because this is the part where Notre Dame not being in a conference bothers me, but the geography, nobody leaves like within two hours of their home base. So like there's no travel on kids. Like they don't put their the kids don't travel at all. Like at Alabama, the furthest they're going and they're actually playing on Texas's campus September 10th. That's rare because Alabama yeah, usually yeah, plays yeah. one neutral site game near campus. And that's the extent of how far they travel. I mean, yeah, their road yeah. games are at Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU and Ole Miss. They don't go anywhere, but they do play at Texas in September. I mean, it, so that's a big travel for them. But that, that's the way that's the way it always was supposed to be with the geographical conferences, well, which is fine. But like they don't even step out of conference in September and play away like they don't go to Oregon. No. They will no, never go to no, USC. No. Like they won't go to South Bend, Indiana. Like they are actually Notre Dame and Alabama agreed to a two year deal in like 2031 or something. But like that is <laughs> but like that's the rarest thing. Alabama doesn't leave. The South, like they don't leave yeah, the deep yeah. South, really. But this schedule, it's true. I mean, true. I don't know if the SC, like, it's just weak. I yeah. mean, Auburn's down too, so like, it's not even a good Auburn team. LSU's down, but oh, I know it's, it's Brian terrible. Kelly it's... will make it right one day. But you know, 
Listen, it's what, just a what week it schedule. Com- they're, if they don't go twelve and zero, they're going to go twelve and zero, guys. Like there's, they're they're going to go. They're right. They're going to go twelve and zero, and that that leads me to the number the number two team in the country, and that's Ohio State, right? They've got the number four recruiting team. They've got a little bit of a tougher schedule. They've got Wisconsin at home. They've got they're at Miss, uh, uh, Michigan State. Their their big game of the season, and they're going to be undefeated going into it, is. November 26th at home versus Michigan, which is always their last game of the season. Biggest I mean, rivalry in college football. Are you purposely trying to be, are you purposely trying to say that you're just ignoring Notre Dame like they're a cupcake <laughs> non-power five with your Indiana Hoosier hat on? You can't be serious right now. You think all I'm right, going to let all that right, go? Of course, of course, of course. And you you caught me. Of course, they're playing Notre Dame, but um, okay. And and that's that that should be a great game. We'll see. We'll see how much Notre see. Dame has. Listen, listen. Ohio, I, Notre Dame's a good team. Ohio State is really yeah. no, really good. Ohio State. So listen, C.J. Stroud is the real deal. They bring back two. I know they had two top receivers get drafted in the you know yep. the Jets took Alave yep. and I think the Saints took. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, no, Jets took Wilson took and the Saints yeah. took Alave yeah. um, high up. But they do bring back probably their best receiver and Jackson and Jigba Smith. I can't wait to hear that name shouted out nine he times is, tonight. He is he and, is arguably the best receiver and in football. the son yeah. of one of the greatest receivers of all time, Marvin Harrison Jr., who's also and, really good. And just well, you also have to remember they're they're bringing back the the number one ranked running back. Uh, well, Travion Tra- Henderson Travian, or something. Travion Tra- Henderson, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, there's so- there's studs all over. No, oh, listen here. Here's the deal. Ohio State is the number one offensive team. And that is with Alabama yeah. in the conversation. They're better yes. than Alabama yes. from top yes, to bottom. They, yes. they fall short defensively with Alabama, but they That's are correct. number one offensively. And so what people are going to watch tonight, week one in the shoe, what's it called? The horseshoe, the shoe, whatever Ohio State calls themselves. Is that what they call themselves? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. You're going to watch the number one team offensively. And that's backed by last year. They were number one offensively last year. And it's a rare thing in college football when you're the yep. number one college football team offensively and bring back your quarterback, your Heisman Trophy quarterback, your Heisman Trophy candidate running back, and two dynamic receivers. I mean, that's rare in college football if you were number one the year before and you bring all that back. So they yeah. will be the number one offensive team again. This oh, year. they're, they're going to score points just, like Ohio it's nobody's State, business. It's just a matter of how much they improve defensively because they were – sketchy defensively so it's going to depend how if they improved leaps and bounds defensively they're better than alabama this year in my opinion if they've improved defensively the question is can anybody stop that offense that's that's the real question here and i i i don't know if there's an answer and the answer is and by the way when ohio state for i give them a lot of grief because ohio state has historically under urban meyer and now even with the new guy uh ryan day they've 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 Choked, not only choked up, but they've coughed up regular season games to inferior teams almost every year. It happens. I could think of games in Purdue they lose. They'll get tripped up to this one or that one. Like they've had some some real strange losses on their resume for a team that recruits like a top three school every year. They've yep. had some head scratching losses, and they've yep. struggled at a conference early. They lost to Oregon last year. Um, they had another at a conference loss a couple years back. I know famously Baker Mayfield went there with Oklahoma, who's a really good team, and beat them in Ohio State. Yep, so they've yep. been known to be beat in Ohio State early in the year. Um, but I actually, I mean, I, I won't, I'll save it. But I, I mean, I think the world of Ohio State this year. I just, I, I think this is their year. So we'll see. Yeah, listen, they're going to be good. We'll see. We'll see if they can get through their first game. But uh, if they can, it looks like they have a pretty easy schedule too. Yeah, they really <laughs> do. They have a pretty yeah, easy well, schedule. They do, they do, and let's go to let's go to our uh, our third ranked team. You got your defending defending champion UGA, number three recruiting recruiting class. Their toughest game of the year, they only have one, is today versus Oregon. And, and it's not uh, that tough. Oregon lost a lot of players. They lost a ton of players, um, and not not to say that that Georgia didn't lose a ton of players. They lost, oh, they, <laughs> they lost 15 guys to the NFL. Okay. 15 they're bringing, but they are bringing back six offensive guys, including the, the great who I laugh at every time he plays Stetson Bennett. And, uh, and one of the top tight ends, uh, Brock Bowers, who is, is a, here's a question. And I should end. know the answer. Where, where's this game today being played? Atlanta. Oh, so they're playing home. 
It's a oh, it's a home game. Oh, it's a home game. Okay, so I love when it's an the Orga- neutral site mark. And Oregon yeah. has got to travel across the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so like wait a second. Or- how did how does how does Georgia play an even worse schedule than Alabama this year? How's that possible? They they both they both play t- their their schedules are just a joke are just a complete joke absolutely complete joke, um, which is unfortunate Jeez. because these are good teams but um, but the one guy that they do have returning they've got they actually have two uh, pre preseason all Americans in uh, Jalen Carter and Keely Ringo Jalen Carter is the number one defensive lineman and he is just supposed to be all world and uh, Keely Ringo is the number one cornerback plus two more defensive players on the second team preseason All-American so they're going to have a super defense like they had last year is is it fair to say though can we already set the stage because you know the SEC apologists will come out in droves and the SEC fanatics will try to make it like these are tough schedules but is it almost fair to say that when Alabama and Georgia both go 12 the no and meet in the SEC title game this year that the losers get knocked out because the schedule was weak as opposed to nor- normal years where it's like they both got to make it they no, both it, shouldn't make it with this schedule this year I listen I'm not arguing with you I'm would not you agree with, with that oh 100 percent. I mean would you dude, agree the loser of the SEC title game should not be the four seed this year because it's yes because they have I no do. big wins on the resume I do agree with that I mean how is listen there's the the, the SEC just isn't strong. I mean, it's either it's either the SEC is overranked, overrated, or uh, Bama and Utah, uh, Bama and UGA are just that much better than all the other teams. It's one of the two. But yeah, the, well, and, the, well, no, both could. Be, I mean, both could be true this year. The SEC. Here's the thing. I'm gonna have a hard time believing Georgia's a juggernaut this year because they just graduate. They just lost a lot of guys to the NFL, and I don't think they reload like Alabama yet. I don't think Kirby's got it like that yet. So I'm going to have a hard time believing, but this is a dog crap schedule they're playing. I hope Florida could give them a game. I'm looking at the schedule. Like, who's going to give them a game? Nobody. Like, it, it's there's bad. really nobody. Now, it's with bad. that With that defense, their defense is going to be absurd. Imagine, I mean, remember how fast that defense was last year? They're, it's going to be the same thing uttering, this year. Imagine you're, you're Kirby Smart and you walk into the locker room where you're talking with your coaches when no cameras are on and you go, fellas. We get by at Kentucky on November 19th. We're home clear. Like, that's their schedule? That's it? No. That's their, that's their tough get by, game is We get at by Kentucky. Kentucky on – not basketball Kentucky, football Kentucky. Know, we get by football know. Kentucky on November 19th. We as good. We as good as pig and doo-doo. Like, what? Get out of here. It's, that's it's, schedule. We're as good as pick and doo-doo? I, I don't even know where you're coming up with the stuff, but you're definitely a northerner if that's if that's what you're saying. So I am um, a northerner. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> so I, I just listen, I, I mean we're not I we're we're not gonna get into the rest of them. I just think it's it's interesting just to talk about the top three and the fact that their yeah. schedules are just overall not what they should be. I mean, Michigan does have I mean Ohio State does have a much tougher schedule. Ohio than the State other two. has the toughest of the three by far. Yeah, by Notre Dame, close, Michigan. Not close. Notre Dame and Michigan on their schedule is tougher Wisconsin, by far combo. Wisconsin yeah. is always a tough game. At Michigan State yeah. is is a tough game, but yeah, they got but, tougher games. Yep. But their but their offense just on paper is just absurdly ridiculous. I mean, they're just these this team is going to put up fifty plus points every game. I mean, it seems like so except you got tonight, you got yeah. you got OSU who's going to put up a lot of points except for tonight. You got UGA who's not going to allow any points. And then you've got Bama, who just has a weak schedule and is just going to look great. So I mean, it's Alabama's average margin of victory this year. Here's my prediction for all of you yeah. at home: yeah. forty-three and a half points scored <laughs> per game, <laughs> opponents' points per game, five point seven. <laughs> They're just, it's, it's no, I'm, it's I'm not even kidding crazy. when I say that. That might be close to what it is. Well, here, let me ask you another question: Can Will Anderson actually have a better season than he had last year? Uh, you know, he might get the double team situation where it yeah. brings his numbers down and they're going to be up big so early in games. He may get yeah, pulled, yeah, so it yeah, may hurt yeah. his death. It 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 should be interesting. It's it's going to be fun. The one other thing that I wanted to, to – well, actually, I want to get into a couple storylines because I know we don't have a, a ton of time. Um, and one of them is Brian Kelly at LSU. My family. My an family. Interesting, an interesting move for him to replace – our friend Ed Ogeron, who do it for my family. I, my family. I think I think he lost his voice finally. I don't know. 
But uh, what do you what do you think of that move? I mean, you know, you obviously know of you know a lot about the guy being a Notre Dame fan, and he he's done some incredible things for that program. What what do you think? Is he going to be successful in LSU? I think Brian Kelly goes home at night, shuts the door on his probably nine bedroom mansion <laughs> on the bay somewhere in the <laughs> nicest part of Louisiana, <laughs> looks at his wife and goes. I better win a title because this place is terrible. I hate it. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. These mosquitoes are all over the. Oh, I'm getting bite left and right. Biting me. I'm redder than a tomato. <laughs> I'm tired I'm of than a ripe this tomato. alligator. I can't understand anybody, and everybody's eating crocodile like it's chicken nuggets. <laughs> I, I I don't think I don't think I don't think I think Brian Kelly that the term fish out of water was was that phrase was with Brian Kelly in mind down in Louisiana. He's I mean, there listen, for one reason. He's there to win a national title. If he does not win that, he will have wasted the next three to five years of his life and misery. So well, I don't I hope did. he gets it, but that's the deal for him because but, he can't but, like it down there. I don't care what he's already, he, he, already, he already has a lot of money. So I don't know how much more money he needs, but it's funny because you're, you're going from, from literally like the Arctic circle to like the, uh, the yeah, but equator. He's a Boston. He's a Boston. It's like hotter guy. than hell down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he's a Boston guy. It's not even just Indiana. He's a Boston guy. He cut his teeth in some of these small schools in Ohio and stuff. Yeah. He won. Yeah. Then he goes to Notre Dame for a decade. Now he's going down to Louisiana. Every other person who speaks to him, he cannot understand. But you, you know what? I don't understand though, dude. You got a cushy job, like the coach at Notre Dame. I mean, that's it's, not I true mean, though. Why is it cushy? No, no. You're right. It's, it's a tough be- job. It is a tough job, but it's it's like it, it cushy in the sense that he could have been there forever if he wanted to be. I don't think he would have got fired. So if you're saying he had he that's, had bought him with two that's playoff what appearances, I'm saying. that's with what I'm three saying. playoff appearances, including the BCS championship, two playoff appearances under the new format and the direction or the consistency they've had since since 18, he certainly bought himself two three more years easily where he could have just skated by. Yeah, the there's pressure no now because there's he no went doubt. to it. He left them. Yeah, I mean, he has more pressure right now to win than he did this year at Notre Dame for sure. I mean, he. I mean, he's got to go and he's got to he's got to beat Alabama and in Georgia. I mean, good luck, good luck there. Well, that's a newfangled statement. The Georgia part, Alabama's a problem. True. But maybe well, he thinks tr- he could outlive true. Saban. Maybe he thinks he could outlive him, and Saban's going to retire before he does. Sa- well, Saban just got a what a fifty year extension. I think he's he's now signed through through the age of one hundred and eight. So uh, we'll see, we'll say we'll see. So there there's so many so many more things that we could talk about, but I I wanted to get into I want to make sure that we do this. I want to get into your Phil's big three, and that is every week. Phil, I'll, you know what? I'll let you explain it, Phil. What is Phil's big three? So Phil's big three. These aren't my favorite three games in terms of my uh, acumen to pick against the spread, which we all know I have based on my my NFL prowess this past year. People made a lot of money banking on with old Philly oh, on the on the ton. NFL bets. But a the ton. big three in college football is going to be, I'm going to select what I think are the two biggest games of the, the week, just in terms of typically it'll be based on the rankings. I mean, I know the rankings don't always mean anything, but I'm going to pick the two most popular games of the week in terms of fan interest. And then I'm going to just pick my my game, I think, a lock. I'll call it like a best bet, a lock where Beautiful. I am. It's not the best game of the week at all. It's just the game I like the best to pick. So... It's pretty obvious this week. I don't know if I'll have an easy time every week, but this one's pretty obvious. Georgia, and you're going, you're going, you're going with the spread, right? With spreads, with spreads. Yeah, because okay. it's okay. too easy okay. without. Like, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, what what do we got here? We got Georgia, Oregon for sure at three thirty today. Um, although I do think it's a diminished Oregon team, it's still a good non-conference uh, matchup. And then the game tonight is the best game of the week in terms of Ohio State and Notre Dame. So those are the two best games. And then I'm also going to – I'll start with my best bet, and I'll tease the champ, the two big games. So my best bet – and I hate this team. So for me to pick this game, it's – you know I really like it. I'm going to take <laughs> – at noon today, I'm yeah. going to take Michigan laying 30 and a half. Oh, my God. 30 and a half over Colorado State. I, I think – it's just a bad Colorado State team. Michigan is <laughs> is a good team. Yeah, yeah. They are. They're a good team. They can run the football. I think they're still going to be a good team. I think they have another year or two before Khakis retires or gets fired. And I think this might be Michigan's best team. 
last year and yeah. this year is their two best teams. So I think, yeah, yeah. I think they cover big. I think they make a statement. They get a cupcake week one at home. I think they cover pretty easy. So I'm going to okay. lay 30 and a half, which is a big number, but whatever. That's a lot. That's then a lot we'll of go, points. Yeah. We'll go Georgia, Oregon. Do I think there's a chance this game can remain close for a little bit? Maybe. I think the new coach at Oregon, I think they've lost a lot off that team. Yeah. They're not yeah. even close to the I, – I would argue right now they're the third best team in the Pac-12. I think Utah's clearly better. I think USC's yep. going to be better. Maybe yep. not week yep. one, yep. but by the end of yep. the year, they're going to be clearly better. <laughs> I don't think Oregon's particularly good. And they're basically playing in Atlanta. I mean, they're playing in Atlanta. So they're playing, playing Atlanta. basically yeah. in Georgia. They're not playing yeah. on campus, yeah. but it's a home game for Georgia. I yeah. see this game being like 30 to 10. I mean, I well, what's think a, what's the spread on this thing? Is this a, 16 this is and a half, big spread. Right? That's a big 16 spread. 16 and a half, but I think they cover pretty easy because I don't think Oregon's going to score on them. Okay. And I, I think it'll be, I think Oregon will play good defense for a little bit. It'll stay close for a little bit. I could see Stetson Bennett not getting off to the best start, but then by halftime, it's almost a cover. Early third, they're already covering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will throw out a little something. I think the Utah Florida game, I almost made that one of the big two games. Because I think really? just in terms of I think in terms of competitiveness, I think because Utah's travel into the swamp makes the game close, very close. And I think Utah's really good. But I think the game They're being in Gainesville at night, new coach, excitement down there, I would not call it an upset if Florida wins. To me, this is yeah. where you throw rankings out. Utah's traveling across the country, down into the swamp, SEC land. That's a tough game. Kudos to Utah for playing it. I don't think Florida would return. Is Florida returning the favor to Utah? No, I don't think so. I don't think I so. Don't but here's so. here's here's, so. here's the, but you, you just got to and I hate to interrupt you. You got to throw something into the mix too, because you know, granted, yeah, they're traveling across country, but they were also up. They they were all day yesterday. They spent walking door to door trying to sell Bibles, trying to give people Bibles. So they are exhausted from being in the sun all day too. You got to keep that in mind too. Not yeah, only that, that, not only that. Did, do they get to bring their many wives with them? I mean, I, there's so many unanswered questions that I have here. So I'm just putting that we'll out see, there. But we'll anyway, see at seven o'clock. Yeah, we'll, and see, then, we'll see what happens. And then we'll go. That. Our game of the week, man. Come on, let's hear it. The week. Let's hear it. By the way, Ohio State's also laying 16 and a half in this game. That's a lot of points for a, a lot of points. And, what, and listen, what's Notre I think, Dame ranked number five? They're five. Yeah. I mean, on paper, they're that's five. A, but you know what? I think what that speaks to more than anything, I heard somebody say, like, how could they be ranked five and be 16 point underdogs? Yeah, because it yeah. speaks to college football has three great teams. That's so right. it kind of makes exactly sense. Right. If you just look at it as there's three great elite five-star rate, you know, consistent top three recruiting teams That's who right. also are the top three best teams. Then after that, it really falls off a map. Notre Dame yep. every year yep. is called overrated, but they're really properly rated. They beat everybody else and they just don't yep. lose to yep. the three or four best teams. So they're That's actually right. properly rated. Um, That's right. I agree. Funny to say, but it's true. So yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's kind of what I think of them a little bit. But so what are your um, thoughts on that game? So it really gets down to this for me. Notre, so I think styles or, or matchups are made by the styles of the teams. So how I look at this matchup is that Notre Dame is going to be starting a true sophomore quarterback who's a running quarterback. He can throw, okay. but he's a running quarterback. Okay. They have three really, really good running backs, and they have a really good offensive line. One caveat, their center is a game time decision. He got hurt in uh, in spring ball and they thought he was out for a while and now they're almost back for week one. I like oh, wow. their offensive line much better with their um, second team All-American center playing versus not playing. But yep. if yep. he's a go, and I won't know this till seven o'clock, so I don't have the hindsight of knowing that. I think they match up well in terms of running the ball and controlling the clock and being a pain in the neck for Ohio state. Cause they could shrink the game, keep the ball out of Stroud's hands. And I think be a difficult team. What I think it'll do because I think they can run the ball is I think Ohio state will have trouble covering. And I think mm -hmm. Ohio state will score a lot when they have the ball, but I think they'll be under pressure to make every possession count because they're going to probably have two, six or seven minute drives against them. Cause I could see Notre Dame being able to do that to them because Notre Dame's got a really good offensive line. And yeah, really yeah, good staple yeah. of running backs and a quarterback who can run. Yeah, I think yeah. in the end, does Ohio State win? I think they do, but I actually think it's going to be really close. I think Ohio State's going to win something like 34-30. And I think oh, it's wow. going to be a really good game, but I think Ohio State wins. 
but, I, but I'll take Notre Dame plus 16 and a half. I think that spread is a little bit based on Ohio State's incredible offense. I think it's a little bit based on um, Notre Dame being bad in these big games. Yep, I yep. think it's a little bit based on those factors. I mean, I think it's a little, and Freeman's a brand new coach. It's not Kelly there. So there's an uncertainty on a new coach and what that looks like. So I think there's, and it's, and it's a way game on a campus. It's not a neutral site game. They're in Ohio state. So I yep, think it's, yep. it's, there's a reasons it's a 16 point spread, but I don't think it'll bear out that way. And I don't think actual in terms of talent, it's going to be noticeable. I think it's right. just that Notre Dame's got a bad reputation in these big games. And I think it's they deserve true. it. So, it's true. I it's think, true. But well, I think I think it'll be a close game. Ohio State will win though. Well, there you go. There you go. Michigan minus 30 and a half. UGA minus 16 and a half. And Notre Dame plus 16 and a half. Man, it's exciting. Phil's big three. We'll see what happens, man. We'll see if your uh if your NFL expertise is carrying on to the college football season. I'm excited. I'm excited. And 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 In a lot of great seconds, things going on. Yeah. 30 seconds. You got it, you got a, a championship game. We don't have to do the final four. You got a championship game. Oh, is it, is man, it your, it's, is it Alabama, Ohio state? Are we both going to be locked I, into that? I, I think it, I, I think it has to be, I think Alabama's schedule is so weak and I, I think I want to get away it, from it, but I can't even get away from it. It's, it's, it's really tough too. It's really tough too. I mean, at least, at least Ohio state has some tough games, but their offense is just, is just going to be so powerful. Listen, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens tonight. We'll see what their team Ohio looks State like. Ohio State can afford up, to lose a game, game, though, and win the Big Ten and make yeah. the playoff. Alabama yeah. might not be able to. I'm telling you, I know people are going to hate that's the thought, but if Alabama and Georgia meet at 12-0 and 0 with these weakest schedules, I think the loser goes home. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, listen, it it, it should be a fun season. I'm, I'm excited for it. I wanted to just leave you with one thing. I'm just going to leave us with one thing, and, uh, and that is on August 28, 2001, Albert Pujols. Now remember, this is 21 years ago. Albert Pujols hit a home run. Serena Williams won at the U.S. Open. Vladimir Guerrero Sr., Craig Biggio, and Dante Bichette all got hits. 21 years later, August 28th of 2022, Pujols hits a home run. Serena wins at the U.S. Open. Vlad Jr., Kavan Biggio, and Bo Bichette get a hit. Is that kind of wild or what? I mean, isn't that crazy? That's a full circle thing right there. That is it, it's it's like it's like like stuff like that just amazes me. I think it's it's just it's just unbelievable. So um, you know, and and interesting enough, Pujols and Serena are coming to the ends of their careers and these guys are are just in the beginning. Um, so I guess twenty years from now we're not gonna see another Pujols home run or a Serena win at the uh, at the US Open, unfortunately. But um but but good stuff, man. Enjoy the college football opening full game, uh, full slate of games today. It should be a great, great season. I'm so looking forward to it. And I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the episode. If, you're, if you didn't, keep watching. If you did, keep watching. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell everybody you know. <laughs> Uh, like I keep mentioning, we have, us, some, keep we have some, we have some good things coming up. We're excited. We're in negotiations to, uh, to be sponsoring the 2024 national championship game. How nice would that be? The fill in the bike, fill in the mic national championship. I'm just putting it out there for right now. So, uh, hope everybody enjoys their college football opening, uh, opening day game slate and, uh, Phil, good luck with, uh, the car and, We'll see you guys soon on another episode of Fill in the Mic. See you guys. Thanks so much.